Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu amma ba'du fa'auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim there is a very dangerous bridge. It's more dangerous because you don't know about it. It's almost secretive. If you drive on that bridge, cars crash. People become sick on this bridge. Violent fights erupt. It's so dangerous that three million people died from this bridge last year. And yet most of you probably don't know about it. The bridge connects two cities. On one end is the city of hope. That's where many of you live. In the city of hope, people are happy. Families are together. They're prosperous, they're healthy. They make reasonable good choices and they care for each other. On the other end of the bridge is the city of despair. That's where there are no families. Families are broken. People look happy on the outside, but deep inside they're empty, they're struggling, they're crying. They have financial hardship, they have disease, that they don't talk to anyone. But most importantly, in the city of despair, no one cares. Now you may wonder, who would go on this bridge? Why do we even need this bridge? Well, there's a point, there's a catch. People go on this bridge because they get enticed. They're told, that you will see the best sunset. The views from this bridge are so beautiful. The waterfalls and the snow-capped mountains, boy, it's an experience of your lifetime. And more importantly, all your friends, when you look at the bridge, you see all your friends there. And you almost want to go there. You want to fit in, hey, right? You know, everybody's having fun on the bridge. Now, by now you all know, this, is the bridge of alcohol and drugs. That's wrecking our society. I would like to thank respected Amir Saab Canada for raising this very important issue and inviting this humble, undeserving servant of Hadrat Khalifa al Masih because Imam Saab was right. This is a shared issue between America and Canada. But the important thing here is that for the time that I have, I'll just focus on alcohol and marijuana. See, all the other hard drugs, cocaine, heroin, there is taboo in the society. If you look at all the drug use, 80% is between alcohol, marijuana, smoking. But there is, instead of a taboo, there is glorification. There is no business dinner that is considered complete without alcohol. There is no high school experience that is considered complete without trying a joint of marijuana. They tell us this is the new normal. This is not the normal. I'm not reading you statistics. I can tell you I've seen 25,000 patients in my career. Let that number sink. My beard is white for a reason. And yes, you can laugh, that's okay. You're in the city of peace, in the city of hope. Many of those patients used drugs. It's not the normal. One such patient, he was 60 years old, he, forget about the age, he was an executive, making six-figure salary, high six figures. Went home, drank responsibly, unwind, drink again, drink, drink again, before he knows he has a habit, he becomes a drunk. He starts getting into violent fight at work, violent fights at home. People are asking him to go get treatment, he gets treatment, loses his job, gets another job, and then becomes sober. But the story doesn't end there. These drugs are toxic. They don't leave you. Two years later, his son develops a physical condition, who's still a minor, goes to see a doctor. While the interview, the doctor asks him questions and realizes that the son was abused. He asks the son, what's your biggest fear? He says, my biggest fear is my dad coming home drunk and beating me with a belt. Next thing, police shows up on this executive's door. 
They take him away from his family. He loses his professional license. And why do I know? Because during this process, he had a sore on his leg that he could not tend to. And ultimately, he came to the hospital, lost his leg. This is not the new norm. This bridge is killing us. It's destroying societies. People are becoming abusive. Now, you may think this is just one sob story. This is not one story. Last year, just in my homeland, America, 80,000 Americans died because of alcohol. That's put in perspective. That's more American deaths in one year as compared to what Vietnam War did to us in 20 years. We lost 58,000 Americans in 20 years in a war. Here in Canada, 5,000 people died just because of alcohol-related issues. 5,000. We have not lost that many Can Canadians and Americans to terrorism, including 9-11, since 9-11. That's the magnitude every year. And this is what you see on the surface. The danger of this bridge is it's secretive. The amount of families that are being wrecked, the children that are being beaten with belts, the wives that are being abused, the STDs that people are getting, the bankruptcies that are being filed, the DUIs that people are, you can go on and on. Similarly, the issues with marijuana. Marijuana is safe, they tell us, it's legal. Just because something is legal doesn't mean it's safe. Alcohol is also legal. Listen to this. In March of 2014, a 19-year-old boy, clean, never used drugs, went to Colorado with his friends. Colorado is a state in America where marijuana is now legal. In the evening, he had a cookie, a marijuana-laced cookie. Yes, these are the things that come to eat in the food. Biscuit, brownie, gummy bears, cookies. This boy took one-sixth of the cookie after 30 minutes. He didn't feel a thing. What would you do? He just took the whole cookie, right? A cookie is to be eaten together. He went to sleep six hours later. When he woke up, he was sweating. He was shivering. He was not making sense. He was talking to the lamp. His friends would hold him down, and he wouldn't stop. He started screaming, hallucinated, ran out of the hotel door in a holiday and jumped from the fourth floor and died because of multiple trauma. They tell us marijuana is safe. When they did an autopsy, they did not find any other drugs in his system but marijuana. Once again, you may think, one story, what do I care? It's not one story. Statistics show 10% of the people who use marijuana will become addicted. They'll get withdrawal. That's not safe. Come on, you guys are all becoming very serious. Alu kima is safe. You don't, you don't get a withdrawal. Marijuana is not safe. You can't say that. Who says it's safe, you know? It causes short-term, long-term memory loss. People get psychosis, pagalpan. It can precipitate schizophrenia. Your heart rate doubles. You can get a heart attack. People have died of heart attacks after using marijuana. At least 20% 20 20 of the people who drink, at least 10% of the people who smoke marijuana, they'll become addicts. Think of a bridge that shows you the most beautiful sunsets. And if somebody told you you have a 20% chance of falling off of this bridge, how likely you are to go see that sunset? Those are the odds. This is temporary fun with permanent consequences, my friends. But 70 to 80% of our society is on the bridge. Our teens, our students, our professionals, our girls, you know, they feel the pressure. They feel I need to fit in. How will I be a Canadian? As far as I know, the Charter of Rights and Freedom does not require you to be a drunk to be a Canadian. Work hard. Be loyal. Do scientific advancements. Build better bridges. That's how you become a Canadian. But there's an amazing amount of confusion on the bridge. See, what would you do? You live in a society that is obsessed with safety. Really, think about it. You go into a construction area, you wear a safety hat. You get into a car, you wear a seat belt, safety belt. You go into a house, you're a safety alarm. You go to work, there's a safety manual. It's to the extent we have safety pins. And yet, in that same society, 
Thousands of people are dying of drugs. We call it legal. It's crazy when you really think about it, the same parents who would never let the child out of that seat belt during their childhood years will let that 14-year-old go have a drink. That's when it starts, 14 years. You know, the same society that disapproves cousin marriages alleging that it's risky for health will allow alcohol, a substance that kills three million people in the world every year. That's more deaths than lung cancer and AIDS combined. The same politicians who will condemn domestic violence will tell you their favorite drink in the next breath. The favorite alcohol brand, alcohol, that is at the heart of domestic violence. And then our youth, of course, they get enticed. The bridge looks very attractive. You'll have an experience. So our youth say, let me try it. You know the biggest problem with the bridge? A lot of people don't know it leads to city of despair until they end up there. A lot of people think I'll just go there, watch the sunset, come back home. They do that a few times, but that's not what happens. You remember what happened to that executive. You, kept, you keep on going on that bridge until you end up in the city of despair and it's very, very hard to come back from there. I'll tell you as a physician, very few people make it back from city of despair. Something goes wrong there. So our children are also confused and we need to have a straight talk with them. They say, come on bro, it's not even haram. That's what they say about marijuana. I'll come to that in a second. Trust me, I've heard those lines. About alcohol, they'll say, can I drink a little bit? If it doesn't intoxicate me, how about light beer? How about beer? Aza sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if a larger dose of a substance causes intoxication, then its small dose is also unlawful. They say, can I have a glass of wine every night? I've heard that it helps you unwind. I've heard it gives you health benefits. You get better health benefits just by running for a mile, by the way. However, if you must hear about wine, la tashrab al-khamr, as sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do not drink wine, it is the key to all evils. I'm not giving you my opinion. This is your faith. And then they'll say, isn't there some benefit to drinking? Yes, you know, the views from the bridge may be beautiful. Are you willing to pay the price? That's what Quran says, yes, alunaka anil khamri wal maisir. They ask thee concerning wine and the game of hazard, say in both there is great sin and also some advantage but their sin is greater than their advantage. The bridge, you, not, you can't afford the toll of this bridge. You don't wanna go there. And coming to marijuana, they'll say, bro, come on, this is not even haram. Kullu muskirin haram. This hadith is not mentioned once, not twice, almost dozens of times in different books. All intoxicants are unlawful. That's what Aza Sallallahu said, period. But why is it haram when it's not even harmful, right? They'll come back at you. Go look at the statistics in Colorado. The amount of hospitalizations due to marijuana quadrupled after we legalized it, four times. The amount of psychiatric evaluations went five times. Is that a safe substance? How about pot, weed, grass, ice? Ecstasy, you can name whatever you like. No, the answer is no, and it's not from me. Hazrat Masih Mahad alayhi salatu wa salam says, Tum harik be e tadali ko chhod do. Harik nasha ki cheez ko tarak karo. Insaan ko tabah karne wali sirf sharab hi nahi. Now he goes on to mention names. Balke afyun, ganja, charas, bhang, tardi, and every one of them, which is always used for the memory, is bad for the mind. And the end, it is bad for the mind. The Hazur says, abstain from every type of intoxicant. It is not alcohol alone that ruins a person. Opium, ganja, charas, bhang, tadi, and all other addictions are similarly destructive. They ruin the minds and they destroy lives. You mean not even hookah or shisha? Someone may be thinking, yes, not even hookah or shisha. 
That is the beauty of having Khalifatul Masih. In January of 2014, Hazur mentioned it in his sermon. Our Khilafat is so ahead of us. These are visionary leaders who know what their children are doing. And Hazur says, you'll start here today and you'll go on to use more intoxicant and more harmful intoxicants. <clears throat> Be very proud of who you are. We don't need to fit in at the cost of our lives and our health and our families. Our faith has given us a very consistent position. See, you all have looked at that sign, last exit before the bridge, right? All faiths put a stop on intoxicants. Every faith. There's no faith that says, go right ahead and become a drunk. Some will say you can have a drink of wine, but don't get drunk. Some will say, okay, to use alcohol as long as you don't become alcoholic. That's like putting the sign, do not cross the bridge, or last exit before the bridge, in the middle of the bridge, right? It's a one mile long bridge. You get one tenth of a mile and you see a sign, last exit before the bridge. It's too late, you can't make a U-turn. Islam puts that sign a mile before the bridge. Islam says, no, nothing, don't try. Don't even go on this bridge. Last exit, take it now. Shouldn't you be proud of that? That your faith 1400 years ago told you not to put a harmful substance in your body? Nare Takbeer! Islam Ahmadiyat! Islam Ahmadiyat! Nare Takbeer! Now I'm fully aware, trust me, I'm fully aware of the legal battles. I'm fully aware of what goes on in the media, what the politicians talk about, the discussions about legalizing marijuana. They say, how can you not legalize marijuana when alcohol is legal? Fair point. That's a fair point, but that's not your burden. That's not my burden. That's not Islam's burden. Islam says both are unlawful, both are harmful. Your faith has an extremely consistent position. You don't need to change your position. And if you don't have that consistent position, where will you draw the line? Today it's alcohol, tomorrow it'll be marijuana, third day it'll be, hey, he's doing crack cocaine at home, he's not hurting anybody. Why not, right? It's free world. So we'll see how that game gets played out, but we are not politicians. We are people of faith. We follow a Khalifa. We are a family, we live in the city of hope. We don't want our children going on that bridge. We don't want our children having to live in the city of despair. I've seen people who live there. Trust me, you don't want to go there. The biggest problem with city of despair, nobody cares. All those friends who give you the joint today, who say, okay, you don't, got, don't have the money, I'll give it to you for free. This one's on me. When you go down, you're alone. There's no Facebook, there is no one for you. I've never, and I want to emphasize the word, and never I'm standing at the blessed stage of Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih, Hazrat Masih Maud alayhi wasalam. I've never seen a drug addict surrounded by his friends in a hospital room. The other doctors sitting, I can see here, you can talk to them later on. They'll all tell you. We've seen patients who are drug addicts, who come when they're dying but they're not surrounded by their friends in the hospital. Even the society doesn't care. Even the doctors and nurses, they say he's a train wreck. These are the words people use. These, these guys are dying of pain because they're getting withdrawal and the nurses are saying he's a drug seeker. We're not gonna give him any more pain medications. You don't wanna go there. So what should we do? We wanna live in this beautiful city, the city of hope. We don't want to put a substance in our body that makes us lose our minds. Isn't that the difference between a human and an animal? Allah has given the faculty of thinking, reasoning, making a good choice to humans. Animals don't have that thinking. And remember, in the city of despair, people can't make good choices. So why would you want to put a substance just to fit in, just to look cool, just because others are on the bridge? Just think about it. Our religion, our faith is so beautiful that it doesn't scare people, it doesn't talk of punishments, it empowers you. I'll tell you a story. The solution to alcohol also comes from the faith. A man 
came to Aza Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our master prophet. He said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I have three vices, but I don't have the capacity to give up all three. I'm a liar, I'm a fornicator, and I drink. I'm a drunk. What do I do? If you were to tell me one, which one should I give up? How many of you think Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said give up alcohol? Raise your hands. See, that was a trap. No, I'm just joking. Just joking. You're all my family. It's okay. I'm enjoying this time with you. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, give up lying. The man said, came after some time, he said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, I've been able to give up all three. Because when I was about to fornicate or when I was about to drink, I thought, what if the Prophet of Allah asks me about it and I will not be able to lie? So I did not go near that. So just by that one, one advice, he was able to get rid of all his vices. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, we need to be true to ourselves. We need to stop lying. And trust me, if, if after this talk people said, oh, this was a great talk for the youth, then you missed the whole point. This is not just for the youth. This is for all of us. We all live, so remember City of Hope? Families live there. People are together. We're all together. It's not us versus them. So our Khalifa, our Imam has given us messages. We just don't pick up on those messages. It's time for us to go over those messages again. What should we do as a society? We need to stop lying to, each, to, to ourselves. You know, when you take the bridge from Prince Edward Island to mainland Canada, you give $46 toll. And the politicians and the Canadians and the public is up in arms. They think it's too much toll. The same society, your children are falling off from bridges. What's the cost of a Canadian child? Let's be true to ourselves. Forget about pandering, forget about politics, for, forget about re-election for a second. I say this with respect. I'm not saying this to impose our values on you. I'm saying it because we care. Isn't that the golden rule? We are, we, are, we, we are saying, do what we know is good for you. But again, Islam doesn't enforce, Islam empowers. Parents, let's be honest to ourselves. Let's stop lying to ourselves. Hamara bacha sharab nahi pee sakta kabhi bhi. Meri beti to paat ke kareeb bhi na jaye. My son can never do this. Who gave us that guarantee? You know, we need to be very truthful. We live in a, in a place where these mistakes happen. Our children use drugs, not because they're bad, because they're human. The bridge is enticing. They go to schools, colleges. We need to accept the truth. And when they come back to us seeking help, when they come back to us saying, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, that's not the day to tell them, that's not the time to tell them, oh, you messed up the family's name. What happened to us? Summa kana min al amanu wa tawasa bis sabri wa tawasa bil marhama. Isn't that what Islam says? Exhort one another to mercy. These are our children. They need your mercy. When they come back seeking forgiveness, they need your love, they need your help. And relatives, these are messages for us, how we all can give up lying, how we all can be truthful to ourselves. Relatives, please, it's very easy and fun to gossip when it's someone else's child. It's very easy to make pointed comments when it's somebody else's daughter. But what's the guarantee tomorrow it's not gonna be your son? What's the guarantee tomorrow it's not going to be your daughter? Isn't that what Quran says? Woe to every slanderer and backbiter. Be kind to others. Cover people's faults. This is, we are not in the business of exposing people. And people like myself who are blessed to serve this Jamaat as office holders, I say this with utmost respect. But we also need to be true to ourselves. 
we sometimes become very harsh. We become judgy. We want to fix the problem. We want to ban people. We're not in the business of banning people. We're not in the business of cutting our children away from us. The founder of this holy community, Hazrat Masih Maud alayhi salatu wa salam, Hazur says, Agar kisi ne ek bar mere saath ehde dosti bandha ho, ek bar, to mujhe uski is qadar riayat hoti hai, ki agar usne sharaab pi hui ho, to bhi mein bila khauf lomata layam usse utha launga. Ek bar, ehde dosti, forget about ehde dosti, these are your children, these are our, the part and extension of our body. These are the members of this blessed Jamaat. Hazur says, if someone has tied a knot of friendship with me, even once, I have such regard for it, that even if he has drank alcohol, I would help him without the fear of any critic. Our success, my dear brothers and sisters, lies in following Islam. Trust me, don't do that now. I'm telling you, don't do that no, nara. No, don't no, release no. that energy. You need to internalize this energy. You need to think about what you can do in this war against drugs. Sometimes when we do these naras, we just diffuse the responsibility. Don't do it. Our khulafa have told us, this is a time to take the burden that we have been given. Islam has won wars. There are non-Muslim historians who, who write, that some of the earlier Muslim wars, when we were up against an army three, five, seven times larger, some historians allege that Muslims used to win because those armies were drunk on the morning and Muslim armies were sober. Without going into whether that's true or not, we can win this war again today. And we must win this war because this is a distinction of Jamaat Ahmadiyya. We're not talking about these things because there is some epidemic out there. We're talking because this is our distinction. And how do we win this war? If there is a single person here who's ever gone on that bridge, and you know what I mean. Now, I gotta have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with you in the end. Please be honest to yourself. These are not safe substances. These are not halal substances. Just because something is legal does not mean it is safe. And just because something is legal does not mean it is Islamic. Even if the country's law says it's legal, pork is legal, would you go and eat pork? Don't kid yourself, you know better. You're just hearing from me, you already knew these things. And remember, there's another bridge. Inna ilayna iyabahum. Unto us surely is their return. There is a day of reckoning. We have to cross that bridge as well to meet our Creator. Please, don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to your parents. I know of fathers who have left their homes at 4 a.m. in 20 degrees, driving a cab, hiding from people so you could go to school. You know what I'm talking about. There are mothers listening right now who, who are up every morning before you could get up to prepare your breakfast so you could go to school in kindergarten. These parents have crossed a lot of difficult bridges in their life so you could get somewhere. Don't crush their dreams. Go to them, seek forgiveness. Trust me, they'll forgive you. They'll love you more than I love you. I can't claim that I love you more than them. Come clean. You are on a very dangerous bridge. On one side is your family. On one side is your Jamaat, Khalifatul Masih. One side is happiness, city of hope. On the other side is loneliness. On the other side, there's an industry for whom you are just a statistic. You die, they move on to the next one. The choice is yours. We are not Musaitar. We are not going to beat you with a stick. And I will respect your choice. But you also have to make a choice and tell your friends. Next time they come to you, say, hey man, I've changed my mind. I don't put these harmless, harm, harmful substances in my body. And if they insist, then guess what? Instead of changing your mind, you need to change your friend. That's what you need to do. You were born to proudly live 
in the city of hope. You don't belong on this bridge. You belong right here.